Now, we wanted to make sure you got exactly what you needed. So here you go. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. I think I know what it is. Oh, man. Okay, I can't breathe. My heart. Okay. Wow. This is, uh, this is amazing. So exciting. I can't believe this is happening. Oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, it's the Sony. Oh, wow. It's the Sony. Oh, <laughs> uh, are you guys serious? <laughs> and what do you mean? Go ahead. It's yours. <laughs> Enjoy it. Yeah, it's yours. But this is... Go ahead. <laughs> This is not what I asked for. <laughs> do, you, do you guys know what this is? This yes, is, it's it's a camera. It's it's a great vlogging camera. No, it's not. This is not even close to the FX3. This is not a great vlogging camera. It's not even full frame. This is like half frame or something. I can't use this trash. We did a lot of research on this camera. We watched that guy, that um, Purpose Lens photography guy. He did a lot of reviews on this. He did like I want to say like 15 videos on this. Thing. Are you talking about that clown with a beard? He doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. <laughs> he's always pushing this crop frame crap. Like the sensor in this thing is like from 30 years ago. It doesn't even have good specs. I mean, I can't use this. This, this is trash. No, we, we did this because we want to help you with your YouTube channel. You got like seven Minecraft videos on there now and like, two subscribers and me and your mom are the subscribers. I mean, why don't you at least give it a try and well, see if it'll work? The reason I only have seven videos is because I was waiting to get a decent camera, but it looks like I'm gonna be waiting a little bit longer to get a freaking decent camera. You want that trash. Now that was a bit dramatic, but I did it for a reason. I started using Sony a few years ago. It was the end of 2016, the beginning of 2017. The reason why is because I had an, an old Canon that I was using. I was shooting weddings with it. I was doing events. I was doing all of my work with the Canon and I was looking for a better camera. I needed something that could shoot 4K because the camera at the time only shot 1080 uh, because I wanted to be able to crop in and stuff like that. So. I started my search. I was looking all over the web. I was watching YouTube videos, just like you guys are watching now. You gotta remember, it's like 2016. At the time, Sony was the only one that was allowing you to get a camera that had things like focus peaking, picture profiles, shot in 4K, was small, and had really good specs, even though it was 8-bit for what everything else was around it. I mean, and it was cheap. It wasn't an inexpensive camera compared to everything out there and what you got. So I got one and when I got it, I loved it. But what I found out was that I wasn't that good, as good as I thought I was, because when I got the camera, I didn't see a huge difference between the Canon that I had and the Sony that I had. But it wasn't until I actually started to learn more about lighting, to learn more about how everything worked that I saw the difference. Once I started to do that, that's when things really took a turn and I started to see the value of the Sony system. And that's why I'm with Sony today, just because I never changed. And I just feel like most of the time in situations where you're gonna be doing YouTube and stuff like that, there's a lot more to learn before the camera becomes the bottleneck or the thing that hinders you from growing anymore. That's what I want to talk about. That's Best Buy. And I don't blame them for the problems, but what I will say is this. So Best Buy has a number of items in there that you can buy, right? All kinds of electronics. You can even get appliances, refrigerators, toasters, vacuum cleaners microwave ovens, you can get cameras, uh, hard drives for your computer, everything. There's an endless supply of things that you can get in Best Buy, but the internet has changed everything. I can go on Best Buy's website right now and see what they have in stock. Not only can I see what they have in stock, but I can also go on YouTube, which you're watching right now, and I can look at reviews of just about every piece of gear or every item in that store. And I can get people's reviews on it. They could tell me 
what they think, what failed, how it was to interact with the company. And what this does is it allows us a lot of information into things before we buy them. And that's a good thing. But there's also a downside to that thing. Because we have access to so much information now, it's it makes it more difficult to make a decision because not only do you have the different products out there, but you have all these different opinions. Not only do you have all these different opinions, but you have different experiences that go along with these opinions as well. For instance, let's say somebody bought a camera and they didn't like it and they didn't know how to use it. Well, they're going to leave a bad review about the camera. They're going to say, well, the camera isn't good in low light, but they didn't know anything about f-stop. They didn't know anything about the lens that they bought, that the lens they bought was a variable aperture lens that only went down to 5.6. So they're thinking that it's crappy in low light. And it's like, no, you're shooting at 5.6. So it's, it's things like that. Now, there was a movie that came out in 2017 called King Arthur Legend of the Sword. Now, it's been said that this movie is one of the worst movies financially in the history of film. It cost $175 million to make, and it was said that they lost $150 million on the movie. That's pretty bad. There's a range of things that critics say that caused this movie to fail from bad timing, the actors were not good, bad marketing. And I looked through a lot of different articles and listened to a bunch of different interviews. And out of everything that I heard, I did not hear this one thing, which was the cameras that they used were the reason why this movie failed. Nor did I hear the lighting that they used was the reason this movie failed or the microphones that they use or anything technical. In fact, a lot of the cameras that they use were some of the best you could buy. And that struck me as odd because on YouTube, gear is the focus, it seems. When you're talking about camera channels and reviews, it's almost exclusively gear. There's a few channels that talk about story, that talk about acting, that talk about the actual things that make film, whether it be wardrobe, storyline, scripting, all that kind of stuff. A lot of it has to do with gear. And I thought, well, if this movie had this big of a budget, is it just because the gear was so good that it wasn't the problem? Or is it the fact that what makes the movie is the things that made it fail, which was bad character placement, bad timing, bad marketing. See, these are the things that made the movie fail. So if that's true in movies, could that be true for YouTube? Could that be true for vlogging? That if your vlog fails, if you don't do good on YouTube, is it because of your equipment? or is it because of other things? I'm willing to bet that the problem is not your equipment. In fact, I know of some YouTubers who are using their cell phone to vlog with, and I'm gonna show you one here. Cause I can't fall asleep at night without seeing my dreams. Delusion and reality, I'm somewhere in between. Voices in my head get loud and they keep telling me That I'm a fool for trusting in these wings But maybe, baby, this will fly Welcome back to the vlog. It is Saturday. It's another weekly vlog. Sorry, no, it's not a weekly vlog. It's a weekend vlog. I have some plans this weekend. I'm so happy though. I finally got an SD card today. I got my laptop last night. First of all, let's talk about that. I'm so happy. I finally got my laptop. So I am kind of slowly progressing into doing less and less things for youtube off of my phone <laughs> filming on your phone and everything is completely fine you know my phone puts out really great quality videos and all that but then on your phone you know there's limited space i'm constantly like deleting and today i was running around calling all over rosal to try and get an sd card because obviously it would be cheaper if i bought it online obviously but i wanted it now for now for this weekend and quartz actually had the best price and it's radio shack too so Back to the this is YouTuber Gabax Carolina. She uses her cell phone to shoot vlogs up until a month ago to where she got a new camera. I, got, I believe she got the Canon M50. She's been growing and people have been subscribing, but 
I don't believe anybody has mentioned the fact that she's using a phone. Now, she may have said in her vlogs that she wanted to use her phone at the same time and maybe it got in the way of her being able to vlog, but quality wise, it didn't matter. She still got subscribers. She still got watch time. She still got comments and it was fine. She didn't have the best camera, but it worked. So what does this mean? How is it that people can use their cell phones? How is it that people can use equipment that we aren't talking about in these communities and excel? How much does gear really play a role? And that's the question that we are constantly asking ourselves. Information overload, it can be a problem. I honestly believe if we had fewer choices, more people would be creating because they wouldn't be hung up on the gear itself. So why did I even bring this topic up and what is my point? My point is that the ZV-E10 is not the best camera out there. It doesn't have 10-bit 422 or 444. It doesn't have the best low light performance. The stability is decent. It's not the greatest in the world. It doesn't have a viewfinder, which would help it out in the photography side of it, but it's a vlogging camera that's built for vlogging. The battery isn't going to last you three hours. But does all of that stop you from creating? I would say only if you allow it to. Will I review gear? Yes, I will. I do believe gear reviews has its place, but it doesn't take the place of content. And I know some people may say, well, gear reviews is content. You could call it that. But when I talk about creative content, these are things that come out of your mind that you use the camera to paint that picture. So I just wanted to talk about that. Another person who I think is really good uh, and who has just got into this camera game not too long ago is Rock Wilk. Check him out. He's got some good stuff and he is moving along in this camera world. He's, he's a playwright. That's what he does most of the time is he writes plays. But check his stuff out. It's not always about the gear, it's about the storyline. And people out there have stories to tell and people out there have some good content. So go check him out. Also go check out Gab X Caroline. I guarantee you, you're gonna like these people. Until next time, I'll holla at y'all later. I'm out, peace. Yeah.